Sure. Um, I do apologize to uh, the citizens and to the process as a whole for, for the delay in conducting the business of the port, uh, which we need to get on with. Uh, in particular, the Shoreline Master Plan is a great big deal that is coming down right now. However, I think it's also important for the port to follow the law. And regardless of your preference for who should be in our position, ultimately, who is in this position is governed by the law. Um, to say that there is no state law that addresses this issue is incorrect. There is state law that addresses exactly how a vacant position should be filled. And uh, in my opinion, and in the, the opinion of the Attorney General, this was not followed. There shouldn't be any other motivation required of a public official beyond knowledge that they are performing an act that is considered illegal that should cause them concern. It doesn't matter if you like the person or if you think they have done a good job. It's the basis of democracy that things occur in a legal manner. Um, that's the issue that I've been bringing up since November, uh, both privately and in open meetings. Um, and until now, I haven't really raised anything else other than the process, but uh, tonight I'm going to, which is that I'm very disappointed in the way that the other commissioners and the port attorney have responded to my concerns about this. Um, my initial contact with any of them regarding this and my concern about the appointment was with the port attorney. After I had spoken to a number of people about it, uh, and I was met with hostility and an invitation to sue the port at the first meeting. Um, I contacted Commissioner Bacchus and uh, Commissioner DiCarlo about it prior to the appointment and was not greeted with any invitation to express my concerns or beyond listening to me at the moment or any addressing of those concerns. I was immediately ask to talk to the state auditor if I had a problem, or we'll see you in court. So this is not the, the act of responsible public officials to respond in this way, regardless of whether or not they thought I was wrong. Um, the only source that has been cited in an open <coughs> meeting by any of the commissioners or the court attorney that was consulted was the state auditor. The state auditor responded to the port's inquiry on December 27th, saying that they thought that the proposed method of appointment was unlawful. On December 28th, they proceeded anyway. This has yet to be explained. This is remarkable that the only person you would, the only source you would, would ask would tell you no and you would go ahead. There's been repeated claims that multiple sources were contacted and that everyone was doing due diligence and taking the most conservative approach. This is just simply not true. Um, I asked in open meeting if any of the commissioners or the port attorney had consulted any other sources of information or had any other input regarding this topic. And they said no. Okay, so this is in, this is an open record. So since, since all of this has occurred, now we have an attorney general opinion, okay? The, uh, there's been uh, quotes from Commissioner DiCarlo in the paper that it's only an opinion. So we don't have to do anything because it's only an opinion. Uh, a legal opinion, uh, if you want to dwell on the word and try and discount it because it's an opinion, a, a decision of the U.S. Supreme Court that is written down and is ultimately the law of the land is an opinion. To devalue the importance of the Attorney General's opinion, it means one of two things. Either the person doesn't understand the legal term and what its import is, or they're attempting to distort the meaning of it for someone else hearing it. Because it's not just an opinion. It's the Attorney General's opinion. In this particular instance, it's an informal opinion. It's called an informal letter of opinion. There's a number of reasons that the Attorney General might do this. It's cheaper because it takes less time and less resources. Sometimes they would like to provide an opinion in a rapid fashion. 
sometimes the question has been asked so repeatedly over the years that they don't feel the need to produce the effort to make a written, formal AG opinion. Uh, and in fact, I provided some copies of the opinion back there. If anybody doesn't have one, there's a whole stack of them. Please, please pass them out right there. Um, it, that appears to be the case here because they reference in answer to the question, is a port commissioner who unsuccessfully sought re-election eligible to be appointed by the port commission to fill a vacancy in a different position on the port commission arising during the time period between the election and the time the commissioner leaves his or her original position by virtue of lo losing the election. They say, in a series of opinions, and once again, this is an opinion, but these are written attorney general opinions from the state of Washington. In a series of opinions we have issued over the last 40 years, 40 years, we have recognized the existence of a common law principle of public policy prohibiting appointing bodies from appointing their own members to positions. And they go on to cite case law for this. Later on, they say, it is clear that a sitting port commissioner is ineligible to be appointed by the remaining port commissioners to a vacant port commissioner position. This is not unclear. This is very clear. Uh, also in the paper, uh, Commissioner DiCarlo and the port attorney have been quoted as citing a Florida case which differs with this. I'd first say that they never brought this case up when asked about it in open meeting if they had any other information. So uh, my, my opinion is that, like myself, they all read that when they read the Attorney General opinion. If not, why wouldn't they talk about it? The reason that the Attorney General mentioned the Florida case is because they did due diligence on the decision. They actually researched case law and the code and other places that might be of relevance to it. And part of doing due dil diligence is looking for something that might be a contrary opinion. And so they mentioned the Florida case as a contrary opinion. And they note regarding the, the Florida opinion, in some states, however, no common law principle exists prohibiting a governmental body from appointing one of its own members to a position over which it has appointment power. And they further note, this development regarding Florida's common law does not alter our conclusion regarding Washington's common law. Further, while we believe that Washington courts would follow this principle, legislation addressing this subject would remove any question regarding its applicability. So, it is true that ultimately legislation, le legislation might be enacted here, but it is not true that there's any doubt about the legal principle and that if this was challenged in court that there would be any different outcome in the state of Washington. The reason this is significant is because moving forward from, from this point, we have to have a valid commission. Uh, I don't think that's the case. The, uh, the dismissal of the Attorney General's opinion is not respectful to the public. It's not indicative of the judgment or the ability to act in the public interest and endangers the future of the port. 